the ministry of the Holy Spirit, how that intimacy is the foundation. And that for me, while I sat down and I heard him teach, I said, this man is truly blessing these people because for most believers, we there, there are three levels of the operation of the power of God. The highest of them is the power of God that is derived from intimacy. But that is not the only dimension of God's power. The highest dimension of God's power comes as a product of intimacy. Hallelujah. The second dimension of his power is invested in principles. Now the difference between the first dimension and the second dimension is that the first dimension will require a relationship. It is a byproduct of a relationship. But the power of God that is accessed through principles does not depend on relationships. You do not even have to acknowledge God. All it takes is understanding and the fortitude for compliance. So it is very possible that an individual can reject the person of God and yet access the power that is behind principles. The power was designed to be released the moment there is compliance to the principles. The third dimension of God's power is access through covenant alignment. That means that the way God administers his possibilities on earth, in as much as we are, the Bible says the same Lord is rich unto all, but the way he has so designed his program is that he hides his possibilities in men. Are we, are we together? He hides his possibilities in men. He hides his possibilities in institutions. And he hides his possibilities in places. You read all through scripture. And if you are ever searching for where the anointing is. Principally, you will find it in men. You will find it invested in earthly institutions. And you will also find it in locations. Are we together? The Bible says in Genesis 28 that Abraham um, went, Isaac came to a place called Luz. And the Bible says he lay there to sleep. The Bible never said he was praying or desiring to see God. He just came to a location. And the Bible says while he slept, he found out that it was not just a place, that it was a portal that gave him access even to the realm of the spirit. That he saw angels ascending and descending. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. When Elijah was about to transit, he didn't just transit in any location. He kept moving from location to location. He got to an exact physical place. And he says, Elisha, talk quickly. I'm leaving any moment from now. Jesus himself did not leave to heaven just everywhere. There was a particular place he stood on earth. And the Bible says he began to levitate even in their presence. So he hides his anointing in men. Hallelujah. Now the way covenant alignment, accessing the anointing through covenant alignment works is that there are people purely through the election of grace. Are we together now? Purely through the election of grace. According to Ephesians chapter 3, when you begin to read from verse 3 to 5, Paul was teaching and he was giving the church in Ephesus the basis for his apostolic authority. He wanted them to understand that even though he was not part of the disciples when Jesus was on earth, but that he had obtained grace and he had been called into the fellowship of the mystery. Let's look at it. I want to establish something and then we'll just pray. He says, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. An exact mystery, not a mystery. He made known unto me by revelation the mystery. As I, I wrote a four in few words, verse four. It says, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Five. It says, which in other ages was not made known. Do you know what this means? It means there were people who tried sincerely 
they prayed, they fasted, they tried to access those truths, but it was archived and kept for a certain age. So it was not about their inability to press. They did their best, but it says that these mysteries were closed and were kept for a particular age. It says, in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets. How? By the Spirit. And the purpose for that is found in verse 9 and 10. Why did God keep this and now reveal to us? Verse 9 and 10 says to make all men see. It is part of that grace combination that was given. There is a grace that can make all men see. Do you know what that means? Regardless the limitation of those men, educationally, intellectually, when they come under that grace, it can make them see. What is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God who created all things in Jesus Christ? Let's read verse 10 together. Ready? One, two, read. It says to the intent. That means this was, hold on. Everything that Paul is saying, he says for this purpose, this is why he beckoned on us to come into this ministry of apostleship to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the multifaceted or manifold wisdom of god so god hides these possibilities in men but according to isaiah 9 and verse 6 every time he sends a word to jacob the intention is that it lightens upon Israel. Are we together? He never sent Isaiah 9, is it? Please look for it for me. He sent a word to Jacob. It lightened upon Israel. Now, do you know the meaning of that? If God wants to speak to everybody, he spoke about the voice of God. But I need you to understand how the administration comes. Because when Samuel had God, he had it in the voice of I mean, when uh, Samuel had God, he had it in the voice of Eli. He did not hear a loud thunder. When God called Samuel, Samuel ran to Eli and said, did you call me? He went back again and God called him and, and Samuel said, I know what is happening. The next time he speaks, it is through my voice, the semblance of my voice, but I know the one speaking. Tell him, speak, Lord. Because you will hear something that I cannot tell you, even though it is my voice. Are we together now? Yes. This is very powerful. What happens is that God would call a man, and through the sacrifice of covenant alignment, God will lead that man through a unique path in the spirit. Listen carefully. A unique path in the spirit that will give that man the capacity to be able to host the dimension of god that he wants to invest in him now when that man successfully goes through that season god will anoint him and grant him the engracing and the reward of that man for staying with god is that anyone within that dispensation who wants to access that dimension of god will never do it in dishonor to that vessel that is your own reward for staying with God. That means God will never bypass you to communicate that dimension across that for as long as you are alive. So for instance, when you talk today about the ministry of faith, choose any man of God on earth that you want to. It will still end in Copeland. You listen to Kenneth Copeland and he may be very simple and basic but you will be surprised ignore his ministry and downplay him through dishonor you will be surprised that as yielded you are in as in the spirit you will never access certain levels of faith until you recognize that ministry as being a conduit that is the conduit that god set up to administer his dimension of faith when kenneth copeland dies god will raise another man again are we together now 
This is very powerful. The ministry of healing. Choose any man of God you know that works in the healing ministry. You will keep routing it. It will get back to Benihin standing today. You will never truly walk in the healing anointing ignoring the presence of that ministry. Are you getting what I'm telling you now? I'm just teaching you how the three layers of God's anointing that you can have that anointing through encounters, through the manifestation of principles and covenant alignment to people who have that anointing based on covenants. That is the reason why you can come under the influence of a man who has that covenant with God. And even before you understand the dynamics of that grace, it will be working in your life. Did you ever read in the Bible that a prophet said, God opened the eyes of another person? Do you know what it takes for your eyes to be open? Normally, if you are to go through the routine and the discipline that will lead to the open eyes, it is not just one pronouncement, but that under a certain influence, there are things that can happen. Praise the name of the Lord. He won't believe that this, all this is just to explain something that I started... We want to see the power of God move in our lives. We want to see endless possibilities flow through us, whether as preachers, business people. And we know that by the strength of the flesh, we are limited. The Bible in many instances has shown the limitations of the strength of man. That we are very, very limited. Limited in many ways. Are we together now? For instance, the Bible lets us know when, when you read, when you read all through scripture, it says, has thou not heard, has thou not known the everlasting God, the Lord. Is that true? It says that he does not, he is not weary, there is no fainting with him. Then he now says, even the young men will faint. The old men will be weary now that is a it's not an information about backsliding it is the reality that comes by reason of wearing a mortal body that there is limitation inevitably you will be limited but then it says they that wait upon the lord they shall renew their strength they will mount up with wings as the eagles they will run and not be tired they will walk and not faint that is the intimacy that he was talking about that when you spend time with God, your spending time with God is predicated upon a revelation that you are incapacitated yourself. So it is proof of humility that you are depending upon his wisdom, his grace to know that if you run just on the strength of the flesh, eventually the devil does not have to attack you. The very configuration of your, the, the body you are wearing is enough to weary you. Are we together now? There are limitations that don't come to men just because they are demon spirits. It just happens because of our humanity. That our humanity itself is a limitation. Are we together now? Let me show you a scripture. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Romans chapter 8 and verse 26. Even if it's just 5-10 minutes I touch on that, then we'll pray. Romans 8, 26. It says, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Who helps our infirmities? The Spirit. And that He provides help over our infirmities the word infirmities there is not just sickness this is the infirmity he's talking about what is the infirmity we are limited we know not that is the infirmity that the fact that we do not have thorough knowledge we are there are gaps in our understanding he calls it an infirmity that by reason of wearing a mortal body, by reason of being, of being a man, that you are limited, unassisted, there is so much you cannot do. And he says there is a provision according to God's intelligence to remedy that reality. Is someone learning already? That the spirit can help. There is something about the human, no matter how well intentioned, no matter how sincere, 
he calls it an infirmity and it's an infirmity that the hospital cannot treat it's an infirmity that no other earthly institution can help to manage he says only the spirit please keep that scripture there that the spirit helpeth our infirmity what is the infirmity we know not that's it we are limited we see in part we know in part no matter how educated no matter how we subscribe to all the things the variables he's saying that make for an excelling life are so many it will take assistance we know not what we should pray for as we ought but the spirit itself make it intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered so the bible is clear here that the holy spirit has come to help everybody say he's a helper the holy spirit has come to help the believer so that the results you command is not a true reflection of your capacity the result that you command is a reflection of how much you have been assisted are we together now that when you see certain extraordinary results coming from mortal men do not be deceived that it is a reflection of their intelligence or their capacity that behind the scene the helper has come to amplify that which that man is doing this is the reason why the great in the kingdom understand that we are truly men that have been helped by god so when you see uncommon results whether in ministry whether in business it is it is to the degree to which you see godlike qualities flowing through a man it is the degree to which the holy spirit has been involved in his life when a man's life is very natural and basic you can know you don't clap for me for walking but when I begin to fly, now that is not something that is easily given to men. You know that I have been assisted. So I can know to what degree you have been assisted by the Holy Spirit by looking at how much of the godlike quality manifests through you. If I still see your humanity, limitations in process, I, like he was talking about lifting mountains, I think that he started with that kind of statement. Are we together now? You cannot be able to lift a mountain, humanly speaking. But when the spirit of the Lord came upon Samson, the Bible says he, he, he will hold, it will be like the chains will be like wax before the fire. If you understand this dimension of the ministry of the Holy Spirit, you will produce extraordinary results. And when people look at you and wonder how come this is happening, you will tell them that it is by the spirit. It is not a reflection of my ability or my capacity. I have only found a way of tapping into the assistance of the spirit. For the spirit helpeth our infirmity. Is someone learning? 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 5. 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 5. Paul was speaking to the church in Corinth and he says not that we are sufficient of ourselves. Are you finding it there now? That many times Paul, the mighty man that we celebrate so much, who wrote two thirds of the New Testament, you would hear him admitting before the people that listen, don't be carried away by the excellence and the dexterity of my communication. I am limited. I am a man. Here he puts it again. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves, to think anything of ourselves but our sufficiency our sufficiency our sufficiency what qualifies us what gives that narrative that we are superhuman is God next verse verse 6 It says, who hath made us to be able ministers, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter killeth, but the spirit gives life. Listen, let me tell you this. By the privilege of God's grace, I have walked a bit with God and I can tell you, one of the major reasons why people continue to struggle in their Christian experience is because they have not come to this state 
where they admit their inability and insufficiency for most people they come to god as strong wanting him to make them stronger you see the strength of god does not find it does not rest upon strength when the strength of god comes and finds strength it will go back till you exhaust that strength so one of the ways that God compels you to need him is to step back and watch you explore your options until you come to a point where you are aware that your strength is limited. Now you are inviting his help. So the Holy Spirit, he's teaching you. When Apostle Mike came here, he was talking to you about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. But let me tell you this. There is a condition and a posture a man must take to attract the person and the help of the Holy Spirit. Just being available is not enough. There must be an admittance within you that I am insufficient and it is not an insult. It is a, an honest description of your state unassisted. Everywhere in the Bible where men declared their insufficiency, God did not ignore them. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. I acknowledge that by myself I am unable to do this. Everywhere God found people declaring that I, I, by myself and by my strength I cannot go far. He would come in and help them. No wonder it is those who do not look like it that truly become it. Because his strength... You cannot appreciate the ministry of the Holy Spirit until you understand something about the weakness and the limitation of man. That way, the Holy Spirit for you will not just become an instrument you use to get power and do ministry. He does not just become a ladder to climb to get fame. There is something about the state of man that makes your relationship with the Holy Spirit a matter of life and death. Hallelujah. So the Bible says the spirit helpeth our infirmity. Let's read three scriptures and then we'll begin to pray. Ephesians 3 and verse 10. If we can get it in Amplified. Paul was mentoring the church in Ephesus. And having taught them the realities of redemption, he got to Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10 and he said, Finally, brethren, Ephesians 3 6 and verse 10 i meant to say not 3 and 10 6 and 10 finally brethren he says be strong in the lord he says be empowered through your union with him be empowered through your union with him he says draw your strength from him that strength which is boundless might provides finally brethren be strong in the lord be strong not be strong in your intellect not be strong he says proverbs chapter 3 when you begin to read from verse 5 he said trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding he says the next verse says in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path the next verse is a warning he says be not wise in your own eyes fear the lord and turn away from evil Every time you see champions in this kingdom, they were not self-made. The first law of intimacy with the Holy Spirit is not asking him to come. The first law of intimacy with the Holy Spirit is not even prayer. It is not fasting. The first law is an acknowledgement. You have to study the nature of man and the imperfections, the plethora of limitations that reside within this species called man then it will make you need God. And the only way God can make that happen is to be patient with you. He will not rush his presence to your life. You will not appreciate the value of his presence. So he will usually, because man as a species is proud, he will allow you to exhaust your connections, exhaust your wisdom, exhaust your intellect. That is why you will see things that should be, but it's not. Because there is a dimension of results that is controlled from the realm of the spirit. In fact, it is the foundation of all results through faith we understand hebrews 11 and verse 3 that the walls were framed by the word of god is that true that that which now appears came from a realm that was unseen
many people are unable to experience the power and the grace of God because we are still sufficient in ourselves. There are many sufficient preachers in themselves, sufficient businessmen in themselves, sufficient musicians. So you will have physically speaking all the things that by the physical uh, requirement should produce for results. Yet you will marvel and wonder. I have told you that there are times you can have a boat. There are times you can be at sea. That's where fish should be. There are times your net can be working and yet you will not catch fish. It is not lack of skill. It is not lack of diligence. There are times all the variables are correct and yet you will not catch fish. At that point, you don't need fishing again. You need Jesus. Now, let me tell you this. The Lord put this conference to challenge us for many of us that we may need to lay down our pride not to throw away the things we know but to come to a point where we realize that except God helps a man there is limitation there is imperfection except God helps a preacher you can do everything you know to do and you will be surprised that it will not work are we together the spirit helped our infirmity the infirmities that we do not know as we ought to know we do not know as we ought to know I think it's first Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2 please give it to us first Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2 I'm just drawing scriptures from my spirit it says and if any man think that he knoweth anything he knoweth nothing as he ought to know you must assume this state as a revelation my dear people I'm showing you by the Spirit of God, the secret of great men. is not so much the things they do. It's a posture in the Spirit that has attracted the jealousy of God. He has come to camp around their lives. There are many who pray. There are many who fast. There are many who study. There are many who are hardworking. There are many who are diligent. All these are very potent principles as far as the overall experience of the believer is concerned but let me tell you the foundation of doing business with God is not religiosity the foundation is coming to a point where you say Lord I'm not ashamed I do not know I am not ashamed if you do not help me I am insufficient by my background my limitation in knowledge the variables and the odds are against me already by default however i am aware that there is a system of advantage you have provided for me now with humility i tap into that system now look up please i wish i had time i would have shown you all that i'm teaching you in the life of jesus himself because Jesus becomes our pattern man. He's perfect theology. The Bible teaches us something very powerful. In John chapter 1, when you read, the Bible says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Is that true? It says we beheld his glory, even as of the begotten of the Father. That glory that was full of grace and truth. Jesus came as the logos of God, made manifest. And you will think as the word of God, he should not need the spirit because the Bible begins John in putting his synoptic account of Jesus traces it to the divinity of God. John 1 verse 1 in the beginning he says was the word. What credential and the word was with God. You talk of intimacy what else is greater than being with God? That is the word with God and then that word was God. Transformation that he was talking about he is not just with God. That word is also God. But watch what happened. When he came down to the earth and became a man, he did not come to the earth as a star. He came down to the earth as the word also. At age 12, he was in the temple learning. Question, learning what? Remember, he didn't lose his identity as the word just because he was on earth. And yet he submitted and was learning quietly with all the gaps and the flaws in the law he still sat down quietly and for 18 years he was preparing after that he now goes to meet John who was now baptizing 
And John sees him and by prophecy he says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. John confessed that I'm not a fool. Oh, even though I'm a prophet, I've seen into the realm of the spirit. I am not qualified to even touch the latchet of your shoes. And he says, suffer it to be so. This is an ordinance. If I declare sufficiency, the spirit cannot help me. The spirit only helps men. When I was God, I didn't need the spirit. But now that I've become a man, I must satisfy that condition of the awareness of my insufficiency. He said, suffer it to be so that the scriptures will be fulfilled. When John dipped him in water and he came out, your Bible says, and the heavens opened. Hold on. The word walked under a closed heaven as the word for 30 years. This is not demons. This is not Satan. Satan would come later on. But just because he was the word, his heavens were closed and the Holy Ghost was looking at him and didn't come until he found that posture suffer it to be so and as soon as he allowed himself to be dipped then the heavens were open you can fast and you can pray and that is profitable but if you do not assume this posture in the spirit where you are ever in need of God don't tell God come and help me he will ask you why because I acknowledge I am inadequate. Now you are inviting him. Lord, come and help me. Why? Because I hear you are a ladder that makes men great. You will keep praying. <clears throat> you must satisfy that condition. Are you, are, are you understanding what I'm teaching you? And the Bible says, as the heavens open, the Holy Spirit came in the similitude of a dove and rested upon him. Then the Father said, this is my beloved son. What was he before? For 30 years he was moving. Calling himself. They called him all kinds of names. And the father never accredited what they were saying. In other words, you people can keep calling him a man of God. I have not spoken. There is something I'm looking for. Until I find it, you will not hear my voice. He found studies. He found diligence and the father did not speak. He even found obedience as a young man and the father did not speak. There was something he was looking for. When Jesus came and said, although I am God incarnate, John, you are the prophetic voice that is being used and I declare that I'm incapable of doing certain things for myself. I submit the heavens were opened. I will tell you the reason why many people do not receive in the body of Christ. We are full of ourselves based on the little results and the tokens of it that we have around. We become full of ourselves and we feel, is there really anything to know? Is there really anything to learn? So the power of God will come and move up you and look for one quiet person somewhere who knows he came from a background with no advantage whatsoever. Who knows that even sociologically he is disadvantaged and he can say, God, if you can find a vessel in me, I may not have what it takes, but I'm willing and I'm available. And the power of God will come and strengthen that individual to the wonder of everyone this is how we came on board we didn't come on board as testaments of intelligence and power we didn't come on board as testaments of of skill there is a place for these things but I can tell you the only way to reflect you see let me tell you this a mirror does not have any image by default it depends on the object that projects it perfect yieldedness You cannot have intimacy with the Holy Spirit until you are broken. Until you get to that point of contriteness of heart. If this is my only charge in addition to what you have heard. Because he told you the necessity and even the advantages that come with walking with the Spirit. But let me tell you this. There is a state that you will find. Are you not surprised that there are many, we pray in Nigeria. 
we pray in africa there is no continent that prays yet our rate of transformation and result compared to the energy we dissipate is very small because i will tell you for many people we use prayer just as a system to get accolades and get respite within the religious circle for others we use these things just for a name but like he taught you there are people who more than all these things they desire to get to a point where their lives will reveal that if God does not help me no one can help me likewise the spirit helpeth the spirit can help a man's ministry the spirit can help a man's spiritual life the spirit can help a business have you seen God help anybody before can you tell the difference between the one helped and the one not helped hmm. when last did you see a man if I ask you to come out now and stand on this stage and I random pick five people and I say point to me the one that God has helped what are the indices you are going to use how do you know God is helping a man and how do you know a man has not received the help of God I wish I had time I would have shown you in scripture there are clear indices that show you can look at your life right now as I'm speaking and you can know whether you have tapped into that realm where you are being carried by the wings of the spirit you will know you have been helped by God if there is anything I dread in my life is that God would never allow me to get to a point where I lose out on this posture that secures his help. That is the worst state any man can get to. That if you allow men or things or results distract you to a point where you lose the posture. When Jesus was on earth, he never called himself father. There are names Jesus never used for himself. He acknowledged that he and the father are one. He called the Holy Spirit Father. He called God the Father, Father. But he never called himself Father. Because there was his posture that me, he need. Don't think the Holy Spirit just came and rested and remained on Jesus just like that. No. There were conditions. Our sufficiency is of God. We'll find somewhere to pray if there is anything that you have seen in this life and any life that you admire i can tell you this behind the mighty things that you see god do through men i want you to know this that the help of the spirit the anointing the wisdom the power they are all expressions of the help of the spirit but that the help of the spirit would not just come to an individual who is just willing it takes more than willingness and availability god is looking for people in this meeting who can genuinely be broken to say lord i know that they call me intelligent i know that they call me beautiful i know that they say i am a great man but I call myself one who cannot move forward except you help me. It is only in your light that I see light. Now, that posture itself is prayer. Because the Bible tells us in Ephesians 3.20 that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. That means your mind is also a prayer warrior. There is something it is telling God. Your thinking can be antagonistic to your prayer that while you are saying lord help me your mind and your understanding can be saying i don't need your help i am full of myself believe me i stand before god to tell you every time i have the privilege to spend time with god a large portion of my interaction with him is lord i am limited limited in knowledge limited in ideas frail as a man i do not even know what my tendencies are outside of your help and assistance and then the holy spirit now has something to say 
he can now come to you since you acknowledge that you need me let's go and he will hold your hands the strange thing is that people will not see him you are the one they will see so they will give you the uploads of both you and him you must be wise enough to channel because you are the one who knows so when you clap for apostle joshua selman the first clap was more than enough all those remaining you are crediting it to the wrong person i must be intelligent to know that if you weigh me and add everything it should not equal the results it means there is a helper behind the scenes are we together now if you ask me to lift this i probably can lift it if you ask me to lift this speaker i may not be able to lift it with one hand easily yet if i touch the speaker and the speaker just rises it means there must be somebody who is there is an agency helping just because you cannot see that agency does not mean it is not there when you see god talk to somebody to stand up and come and meet you and vow that he will not leave you till you are blessed until you rise please learn it that the world is too wicked for people to be that kind there has to be somebody moving them to you you can know the ministry of the helper the life of your pastor is proof that God has helped men everybody you see has a caption on his head that God is using greatly Ebenezer helped by God helped by God in ministry helped by God in business helped by God that one person goes to bed and is sleeping and God will wake another person for his case and says ensure that this person and his children do not cry I give it to you as an assignment based on what do you think this cruel and selfish world how come an individual will just isolate you to bless you the moment you see those traces know that the helper is moving with you listen i'm introducing an economy for you tonight that i pray that you will tap into it you will truly find rest you can allow the helper man of god the helper can come and help your ministry you will try strategies but if the helper is not there to back it up you will be surprised how what should work will not work have i wasted your time so he taught you about intimacy but let me tell you now that true intimacy is not just powered by reading scripture and prayer alone those things only find their relevance when the state of your heart is already in place you are Ebenezer you are Ebenezer many years ago the Lord told me something he said son if you will let men see me there is nothing I will not give you I thought that was a very easy statement if you will let men see me when God came listen carefully we're about to pray when God came to Solomon in the night and said ask his voice had come what do I give you and Solomon started his statement like this let me tell you what made him touch the heart of God he said God I am young I am limited now you have put me as a leader over these great people am i able to lead them on my own that is the language that attracts god he said grant unto your servant an understanding heart god said that's it since you did not ask for the life of your enemies nor for this and that i have given you an understanding heart such as i've given no man and in addition i have given you riches wealth and honor he didn't ask for those things our world today 
prides ourselves in celebrity living the truth is when God leaves you people will acknowledge you but let me teach you a very powerful secret it must become it must become part of your intentional approach to life to make sure that you never rise to a position where you come out of that zone that secures the presence of the Holy Spirit and I am telling you the key is to perpetually remain in that state of need that was the blessing he gave Jacob in Genesis chapter 32 the Bible says that Jacob wrestled with a man after dismissing his wives his cattle the Bible says that night a man came to him and Jacob began the wrestle are we together and he said leave me for the day the, the day breaketh and Jacob said I will not let you go what was the request bless me do you agree watch how he blessed him he said he touched the hollow of his thigh and destabilized the man's balance and then blessed him and changed his name what is your name Jacob thou shalt no longer be called Jacob but Israel for as a prince you have had power with God and you have prevailed he blessed him he touched the whole of his time how does God bring imbalance to your life and calls it a blessing that means he will never have to walk alone unassisted he will always need a staff for that is what he calls blessing that the more de dependent you are in this kingdom that is what God calls blessing that on your own you are never able to stand you will need that rod and staff to comfort you and he says you are blessed he blessed him the sun arose and he called that place Peniel for I have seen God face to face and my life is spared man of God listen to me businessman listen to me there are many things that are not as hard as we think it is it is the state of our heart that continues to elongate and prolong the manifestation of the power and the wisdom of God in our lives. There are many things that others are praying for and God will take it as a love gift and bring it for others because they have maintained a posture. To see you high and lifted up You are shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. We'll see you high up. You are shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing. I've studied revivals I've had the honor and the privilege of meeting a few people while they were alive and one of such people was Reinhard Bonke I remember in 2004 when I went for one of his crusades I was trying to look for the wow factor in that man what made him so exceptional was it the speaking was it what he said tens of thousands of people and i stood for six hours on that crusade ground i was already a man of god who, you don't receive from a colleague there has to be that gradient to acknowledgement i stood there and i said lord you raised this man and you have given him a voice a man who will go and preach in a land and people will bring in my presence we used to buy better max vhs the videos of his crusades it's not what they told me i saw it and he preached when he came up to preach he shared something so simple in fact annoyingly simple for that kind of test and hunger after traveling so far I was scanning lord what is it that secures your presence with this man very simple message and when he was done my heart 
honored God and honored him sincerely. I said, God, help me to see. I didn't just come. Uh, it was not just to come and see this. By the next day, I got there by 3 p.m. I saw them wheeling people on wheelchairs and all of that. And I said, please let me join and help and also honor this man. And they said, no, 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 no. You are not in the committee that was trained. I said, look, committee or no committee. You don't know where I'm coming from. You people should leave me in peace. That was how I was wheeling these people and said, Lord, this is how it will be in my crusade also. I acknowledge that I didn't have the key. I was not seeing miracles to that degree as at that time. There was no need acting. If it's not there, it is not there. Period. Rather than being humble to receive, you can prolong through pride your journey. I told you the power of God and the ministry of the Holy Spirit will search for brokenness. The earlier you admit your limitation, the faster you will see the investment of the Spirit. When I got there, sir, I stood for six hours. And finally, he came up and he shared a very simple parable and he was about to take water. Then he would now minister to the sick. That was the first time in my life. Even though I was walking in the anointing, even though I had seen God help me to a measure, I saw the visible manifestation of the Holy Spirit. A giant bird, bigger than this auditorium. I've told you this. It was hovering around the entire crusade ground. I thought everybody was seeing it. What is this? Silvery lines on the wings. It was not flapping. Just like that. And the Spirit of God took me to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2. And the Spirit of God hovered around the face of the waters. For me, it was not just a lecture. It was not theory. I had admitted that I, I didn't know. God teach me, show me. When you are stranded, you go to them that sell and buy. There are them that sell. Not everybody is in need. There are them that sell. You buy with humility. You buy with recognition. And I stood there. When I saw that manifestation, do you know when that vision was over, I had backed the stage. I didn't even know when I turned. Other people were there just laughing. Others were there. But I went there with expectation. Do you know what made the touch of the woman with the issue of blood draw power? Everybody was touching, but they were touching out of sufficiency. There was a woman who had blood that the life of the flesh is in the blood. It had been drained. It was a matter of life and death. The Bible says she has spent all. That is the key. For as long as she still had some, she would have touched Jesus and nothing would happen. She spent all her options on doctors. Every time there is insufficiency, the anointing is coming that direction. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves. So when you stand to preach as a man of God, thank God for your notes. Thank God for everything, but you now depend on them and you will be surprised. But when you stand knowing that if you do not help me, you are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and praise His hearts always on the floor Oh, our hearts always on the floor From that day, the Spirit of the Lord rested upon me in a mighty way. I had the honor and the privilege of meeting one man who had worked very closely with some of these generals and when I met him I said what did they tell you and he said Smith Wigglesworth before he would die he called Lester Sumro and he said make sure you do not die with this anointing he said when you are old search for young men who understand the things of the spirit and impart this grace upon them and when he said that I said oh God I'm available I do not claim to know yes I fast but it can't be in the fasting yes I pray 
but it can be in the prayer yes i study the bible i do my due diligence but help me i remember when he laid that hands on me i'm about to pray for you i want you to be very sensitive i already see just the cloud of his presence in this place I didn't used to prophesy like I could give word of knowledge but not to step into the prophetic like this one night many years ago please give me a bit of volume I was watching William Branham people had criticized him said all kinds of things because of some of the mistakes he made towards the end of his ministry but I had studied the man myself there are few people who come close to that man's level of humility you if you carry the grace on that man it's only god that will help you to be humble don't be too quick to judge or find out what people are carrying first there are things when you carry on your head it will take mercy to even stand and i was i was watching him it was in the middle of the night and tears were coming out of my eyes i said lord look at the humility that is upon this man many of the people who criticize this man do not have one tenth his anointing and do not even have one tenth his humility i said lord help me and something happened to me light from my laptop something just came and rested on my head like a cold sensation it took more than 30 minutes please help three people now i just saw light as i just said light just help them i just saw that fire we'll wrap up now just that fire three one two three three of them please help them it is what god is doing i'm seeing like like oil just being poured on them please help them Listen, when that experience happened to me, by the next meeting I went to, it was like the heavens were opened. I said, what is this? What dimension is this? about eight minutes from my timer there and I want us to use these eight minutes to pray when the man of God came here he so graciously stirred the waters by challenging you to know that the realm of the spirit is the origin the foundation upon this earth he told Job he said knoweth thou the ordinances of heaven and he says canst thou establish the dominion in the earth thereof more than principles this earth is immersed in mysteries and for you to access the deep things of the spirit to have power with god indeed according to micah chapter 3 and verse 8 it says i have power by the spirit among the three things if i had time i would have taught you the three dimensions of the help of god the last of them is power the empowerment of the spirit comes as his way of assisting you to those who have no might he increases strength that's how he helps them but the strength is only for those who have no might if you have might you keep running ceo you may still have might in yourself and so you will keep running apostle prophet evangelist your inefficiency may be because you have not assumed the posture that can attract heaven to come and partner with you the formula is always the spirit and the bride saying come results don't come because the bride wants it to come the spirit must say come and then the bride echoes come for the word to come the bible says the word was made flesh but John was given the dynamics of that manifestation. It is the spirit and the bride that says come.
when you say be healed as a bride alone there is no healing until the spirit says be healed then the bride says be healed then healing comes when the spirit says be lifted then the bride says be lifted then lifting comes Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Shalaba Sadaba Ladaba Ladaba Feel this love I want to pray for you and I want to ask madam can I pray for you just lift your hands the Lord is calling you to a new season of power I'm seeing a strong anointing come upon you and the Lord is saying by this anointing he's opening gates and he's giving you access access to territories even by the spirit of the living God access to territories even by the spirit of the living God now I want to pray for you please listen Mountains are not moved by holding them to lift them up. They are lifted by the shout of grace, grace. Grace, grace is a code in the spirit. It is a manifestation of the help of God. I'm going to be praying right now. I'm seeing the number 24, just a few minutes, 24. And I'm seeing fire come on those people and the Lord is telling me, that he's taking away the hindrances and giving you room for advancement. I stretch my hands right now, 24, in the name that is above all names. Help them, please. I decree and declare, may that anointing rest upon you now. Rest upon you now. Rest upon you now. Rest upon you now. Upon you now. Hallelujah. Who is Bukola? Bukola. I'm hearing a name Bukola. Is there someone with that name? I know that our time is up. Bukola. If that is your name or you're following online, Bukola, I just want to pray and speak over that person. Who is Daniel? I'm hearing a name Daniel. Daniel. 
Harosha di la koske di branda kaskusia hasa brandi gibalasia. I want to pray for you. What do you do, my friend? This one. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is coming upon you. And you will step into, you will become another man. Even by the Spirit of the living God. My friend, what do you do? Huh? I cook. I cook. You cook? Yes. Because I'm seeing the grace that came on Stephen on you that from the welfare department he's taking you to ministry the call of God is upon your heart your life I want to pray for you father in the name of Jesus may that grace come upon this gentleman that from serving tables I shift you by the spirit in the name of Jesus you will drink of that wine and you will step into superior dimensions of power in the name of Jesus Christ Please bring two people for me now. They will shout loud under the anointing to the hearing of everyone. I just want to speak to them. This one or two minutes. Two people. One is a lady. A loud shout. I'm just seeing the wind of the spirit rest upon that person. It's a loud shout to the hearing of everybody. My friend grace in the name of jesus christ help you a new dimension that young lady this lady please tap her for me the one praying my dear lift your hands i'm seeing the grace that was on esther coming on you and the lord is saying it's a new season i shift you right now by the power of the holy spirit even into that season in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god hallelujah everything that has constituted a delay in your life the bible says and the hand of the lord came upon elijah and he ran and overtook the chariots of ahab even down to jezreel there is a grace that can come upon a man and grant you speed listen you see the zenith of dominion in life is dominion over time dominion over time real authority is demonstrated when you are able to manipulate time to work out an advantage for you it says and i will restore the years not just the things i will restore the years there are three ways that god brings restoration number one he gives you speed number two he is able to take the things that should have been and to bring it even to your future. It is within his power because he is Alpha, he is Omega. And the third way that God is able to restore is through favor. So he can bring you into prepared blessings even by his spirit. There are times that he will empower your crops to produce but it is subject to time but there are times you will need bread directly you will need it even processed he is able to do both it is within his power i'm saying this because i want to release that grace for speed our time is up as i pray please i want you to be your brother's keeper so that people will begin to run by the spirit Please help them so they don't injure themselves. I stretch my hands right now. Shani Kaparatusia. May that grace for speed. Yes. By the road of the priests. By the road of the apostolic and the prophetic. In the name of Jesus. Take that grace. Speed. 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 I decree and declare. Speed in your destiny. I decree and declare. Speed yes. by the spirit of grace. Yes. Ten years in one year by the power of the prophetic. One month receiving one year. Speed in ministry. Speed in business. Speed in 
I set before you an open door by the key of David. That door that no man can shut when able, and no man can open when shut. May your gates be continually open. Yes. And night yes. not to be shot that you would receive the forces of the Gentiles. Now I lend my voice with the angel over this house, the prophet over your life, to speak over you that in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the Son of the Living God, yes. beginning from tonight the grace to begin to walk with the Holy Spirit in deeper dimensions receive it right now Amen. the hearing ear and the seeing eye in the name of Jesus may it be given to you Amen. the hearing ear and the seeing eye may it be given to you Amen. and if there is anyone here who is already walking in confusion outside of the prophetic blueprint for your life it says and when he the spirit of truth is come that he will guide us into all truth i decree and declare enjoy the guidance of the spirit in the name of jesus christ and in addition to all that you have received i decree and declare by the power that raised christ from the dead the remaining half of this the year from june even until december it will be by the spirit for you Amen. business by the spirit Amen. ministry by the spirit Amen. parenting by the spirit Amen. finances by the spirit Amen. open doors by the spirit Amen. in the name of jesus Amen. Christ. I decree and declare that you are blessed Amen. the blessings that come on account of our work with the Holy Spirit may they be evident in your life Amen. in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living Amen. God the Lord bless you Amen. the Lord increase you Amen. in Jesus name we pray Amen. give Jesus a big hand clap